Have we forgotten that correlation doesn't equal causation? Because over the weekend, President Trump claimed that the use of Tylenol during pregnancy can lead to a very increased risk of autism. And now they're highly encouraging pregnant people to limit the use of Tylenol during pregnancy or complete, completely cut it out altogether. So what does the science actually say to the effect of this? There have been some observational studies showing an association between acetaminophen use during pregnancy and neurodevelopmental outcomes, including autism. However, an association does not show causation. What do I mean by an association? Association literally just means that two things are related or connected to one another. Did you know that there's an association between ice cream sales and shark attacks? Meaning that when ice cream sales increase, so do shark attacks. Now this by no means means that if you eat ice cream, you will be attacked by a shark. It means that there is probably a hidden variable in there linking the two and creating some type of associated relationship between them. And in this case, the link between eating ice cream and shark attacks could be that it's summer and it's hotter, so people are eating more ice cream and are also in the ocean more, meaning they're more likely to be attacked by a shark. So that means that these two variables are associated to one another, but they're not. One isn't causing the other, basically. This is a really common example that I've heard basically for the past 10 years of my life. But it just comes to show that just because there is an association between two things happening does not mean one is causing the other. And this association is exactly what's happening when the Trump administration describes the danger of using acetaminophen during pregnancy and it leading to autism. This is an association that is not a causation. There have been multiple studies proving that acetaminophen use during pregnancy does not lead or cause autism. One of the largest studies in Sweden used a sample size of nearly 2.5 million children. And when comparing mothers who used acetaminophen during pregnancy and those that did not, there was no increased risk of intellectual disability in their children after controlling for siblings. Now, this sibling control is really important because it helps control for both genetic factors as well as environmental factors, which could be influencing an intellectual disability. So what is the bottom line of all of this? When Trump said that there was an association between the use of acetaminophen in pregnancy and intellectual disabilities later on, this is not scientifically backed. Medical experts and doctors still believe that when you use acetaminophen responsibly, when it's needed, for example, if you're pregnant and you have a fever, it still remains one of the safest options for managing both pain and fevers during pregnancy. If you are pregnant and you're worried about this, please speak with a medical professional about how you can best manage your pain during your pregnancy. Do not listen to what the Trump administration is saying.